fantastic. Nice to see Tony you. Tony Nora, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Right. And nice to see you too, Tony. I've got to ask you guys, uh, okay. have you ever been on a blind date? Blind date? No, yeah. never. Never? No. Blind date? Blind, blind date. Do you know, that's when you sort of, you don't know who you're going to meet. You're a bit... Never. I always go to on a date yeah. and then I get blind after. But never a blind date. <laughs> what about you then, yeah. Tone? I'm not going to comment. <laughs> You're not going to comment at all. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple of people on the programme today who are into speed dating. If you want to find out more, you certainly will, as we welcome from the speed dating organisation, Sarah York. <laughs> Yeah, che bella donna. <laughs> yeah, I know. What does that mean? What a beautiful woman. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. He's That's so smooth, me. isn't he? He just kind of lets it flow he out a little bit. Looks... Tell us a little bit about this speed dating uh, company that you run there. OK, basically, I actually met my current husband. Mm -hmm. um, I, we actually met in Australia. We, we actually met in a bar that was hosting a speed dating event. Everybody looked like they were having a really good time. So we decided when we got back to London to set up our own company, which we've now been running for three years. Um, we're now hosting speed dating events all over the country, and it's going really, really well. OK, really, really well. And we'll tell you loads more about it, ladies and gentlemen, how to get involved and all about the successes, the advantages and disadvantages. No doubt you'll reveal all that yeah. first. Reveal the contents of your bag for Gina. Okay. Give it a good old Yay. shake, please, Let's Charlie. see. Well, then, right, here Gino, we are. Today. Here. Today, Gino, we've got what? Fantastico, I see pasta already. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Oh, does it look good? OK. OK. I've got some salmon here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And some plum tomatoes, some good. penne pasta, red onion and spinach here. Must be spinach. And better beans. The reason I bought the better beans in was because um, I actually work with beans quite a lot, kidney beans, baked beans, but I've never actually worked with better beans. With the butter, so I thought you could maybe okay. show me something with those. Oh, I'm sure. Um, very diverse. Red onion, I absolutely love onion. I have onion every day. So be careful, Beautiful. don't how stand much, too how close. How did you pay all of, all of that then? Um, it, in total, it was five, just over five pounds. Five pounds, five p. Oh, five p. A little bit over, but I don't mind that because that's a gorgeous piece of salmon. Yeah. Do you approve, Chef? You happy? I'm very, very happy. Yeah. Very. Uh, we Good. can do a lot of things with this one. Don't well, worry. you're going to get okay. on famously, and here's someone oh. that you already get on famously with, ladies and gentlemen. It's her partner. Please welcome Danny York. <laughs> So, Dan, tell us, uh, why do you think speed dating's become so popular? You say, you know, Sarah's saying three years, just in three years, your yeah. business has absolutely grown out of all proportion. So, what's the, what's the reason behind the success? Uh, I think the main thing is, Ainsley, that people have... It's become established now that people go speed dating to have a different... a fun night out. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's a different experience. You can meet a whole new group of people in a social circle. Uh, and if you meet someone on a romantic basis, then that's a bonus. But at the end of the day, it's a different night out to what mm. people have... Love it. And then you to. can, of course, uh, take them home and show them how to cook wonderful food. Indeed, indeed. Well, food of love. A couple of tips amongst coming your things. way. <laughs> yeah, amongst other things. Don't you start, Tone. Go on, give it a good old shape for us, mate. Let's have okay, a look what we've got, what we've got in here. OK, well, there you go. Yeah, let's get rid of that one. OK, Ooh, what we've got is a lovely bit steak. of rump steak. Yeah. Uh, I chose the rump steak because I do cook steak uh, quite a lot at home. Red is my favourite meat, but just looking for some different sort of uh, ways to cook it, really, today. Uh, mm. Sweet potato, I do enjoy sort of sweet potatoes as opposed to sort of the normal potatoes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the reason for that, the portobello mushrooms. Uh, again, I am a big mushroom fan. Mm. Um, so, just looking, never actually cooked with these before, but just looking for a way to maybe sort of make use of those. A uh, bit of cheddar, an onion, and oh, some broccoli. How much was that? Five pound two p. Five pound two p. Oh, he's just edge. I wonder if there's going to be three votes instead of three p difference. But tone, what do you think of the that's old a, that's ingredients? That's a great bag. Egg? That's a great bag. Great I'm bag. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Delighted. Okay, you have a bit of a chat then, Dan. I'll okay. come back and see you. But first, let's find out what Gino is going to be cooking for the beautiful Madonna, as you say. <laughs> come a little bit closer, my love. OK, what I'm going to do, i got pasta, so I'm going to do two pasta dishes. Well, mm -hmm. we are going to do that. We're going to do one with uh, salmon, mm -hmm. a little bit of onion and spinach with a nice creamy one. So we mm. have one creamy one, and the other one I'm going to make penne all'arrabbiata. All right. Which is oh, penne with tomato, chilli, a yeah. little bit of parsley, a little bit of onion, mm. nice and spicy. Mm. Sound good to you? I actually love that. Yeah. Then what we're going to do, with the other half of the uh, salmon, I think we're going to do a nice herb crust. Yeah. Herb crust pan-fried salmon in, under the grill. Mm -hmm. We're going to serve that one with uh, butter beans puree and then uh, uh, spinachi piccanti which is spicy spinach. How's that sound? OK, that no, sounds lovely. Goody, yeah. good. I'm looking forward oh, to seeing that. Nice. Thank you very yeah. much indeed. OK, Gino's on fire over there. What about you, Tone? Um, and what's Dan going to get? <laughs> right, we're going to... We've got a beautiful piece of rump steak here, so we're going to cut it in half, and we're going to do steak and chips mm -hmm. for the boys. Good. We'll curry the, um, 
the sweet potato will flavour. So like, almost like a curried spicy chip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, with the other half, I think we'll chop it up. Mm. We'll make like a burger. Yeah. Um, with cheese, and then instead of using bread yeah. bun, we'll use the mushrooms for top and bottom. So it'll look like a burger yeah. bun, but it'll all be kind of lovely. Um, we'll make a soup with some of the broccoli. Uh, we'll serve some with the steak and chips, and I think a pan-fried cheese souffle. Mmm. Sound good, my man? Sounds lovely. Sounds, Sounds good to me. Are you a real steak and chips man then? Do you like all that type of stuff? Yeah, that's one good way of doing it. Yeah. Can't, can't go wrong with that, can you? Well, well, exactly. well, I don't know. The audience are voting, not me, mate. Out. It could be well wrong in 20 minutes, especially when I say, ready, steady, cook. Oh, all right. Nice. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to do two different type of pasta. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have one type of pasta with lovely cream and spinach and tomatoes going through it. The other type, it's not going to involve the cream so much, arrabbiata. I'm sure you've heard of that. A little bit spicy. It's a classic that you find in Italian restaurants. And one bit of salmon is going to be served on a beautiful butter bean puree. What about Tony Tobin? He's taking the mushroom cups there. He's going to be actually, I think maybe char grill them or pop them into the oven there to, fit, to certainly cook them. And then he's going to serve that in a nice kind of, almost like acting as a bun with his uh, steak haché. The other part of the steak is going with beautiful curry chips. We've got broccoli going with the soup. And we've got a nice uh, cheese souffle that's going to be cooked in a pan. Yeah, Wonderful all dishes all coming your way in the next 20 minutes. Let's start with our chef, Gino De Campo, to find out how he's going to start. Right, okay. do we get some water on, Gino? I'm going to have to get the water on for the pasta <coughs> straight away. Excuse me, yeah. Because the secret of the pasta, we yeah. need to make sure that the water is boiling, very, very fast boiling with salt inside. Because yeah. many people make the mistake when they cook pasta, they put the water and then straight away the pasta in it. No wrong, good. wrong, wrong, wrong. Boiling together. water, yeah, it cleans together, it's yeah. ugly. So okay. boiling water, so the pasta will have the time to walk around. And what around. about putting oil in Can pasta, Gina? A lot of people, sometimes they want to put uh, oil in there, other people say, no, 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 it's not necessary. And so I don't believe in that. The, yeah. the, the best way to do it is make sure that we got a lot of water into the pan, mm -hmm. instead of putting uh, oil. Oil yeah. is a waste of money. Yeah, okay. It's waste of Make sure that there's a lot of water, and once it starts to boil, and you're going around and you stir it, that's Correct. the way to do okay, it. Okay, guys, you've heard that here on Ready, Steady, Cook. Uh, make sure you bring that water up to a rapid boil. We say this all the time, you know, a rolling boil almost, before before you put your pasta in. And for those of you who know, you say, yeah, we know that, but there's so many of us who don't. Penne pasta, is, uh, is it particularly good when you're serving creamy sauces? What would you use this for in compared to something like spaghetti? Penne pasta, they got the ridges inside, okay? Yeah. So the best way to do it mm. is use it with a creamy sauce because the cream start get attached to the penne, okay? <laughs> it attaches to the penne and it doesn't go away. <laughs> that, that, that is... <laughs> <laughs> that is the way to do it. So you need it. The penne uh, is fantastic. Yes. But the only thing, never do penne with shellfish. OK. There is no reason, but it's wrong. OK. OK, there's no reason. It's wrong. You know, in Italy, we do with shellfish, we use the linguine and the spaghetti. Penne is usually with tomato, with the creamy sauce and tomato sauce. Beautiful. That's OK, it. chef, you crack on now. I've been asking all sorts of questions. How are you feeling? You're nice and comfortable there? Yes, not yeah, too bad. Yeah, just not chopping bad. up a few herbs and stuff yes. like that. I'm sure Gino's going to keep you busy. I'll come oh, back yes. and see you. Let's go to the Red Tomato Kitchen. Chef Tony Tobin to... was talking about doing wonderful things and using his mushroom caps inside uh, as for a little bit of a burger. But uh, what's he starting off with? What's going on here first, chef? Um, well, I don't know, to be honest. I'm a bit... <laughs> I've got to catch up. Yeah. Um, let's get the sweet potato on first, okay. I think. We're going to cut this into kind of healthy, big, fat chips here. Mm -hmm. As Look. you normally, would you ever serve that type of thing in your restaurant, Tony? The older... We do sweet potato puree, we do yeah. it char-grilled. Um, and we, people we... really have responded to it. They like the flavour, mm, don't they? It's lovely, it's lovely. Baked, they're lovely mm. baked. Beautiful just baked. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like them sliced. You've probably heard me say this before on the programme, ladies and gentlemen. Sliced up, a slice and put them into a bit of some marshmallows or something. Uh, not, not something, marshmallows on top and bake it in the oven. And the marshmallows actually glaze up and potatoes are sort of cooked through. Really, really, it's so, so lovely. Bit of a kind of a Southern American style uh, dish, that is. OK, what about the spices you want, Chef? To curry? Well, we're just going to use curry powder, I think. Yeah, a bit of curry powder over there. Just on the, uh, to your right, somewhere in there, you'll see a bit of curry powder. That's it. Is that the curry? Beautiful. That's it. Medium curry powder. And do you want that in there now? A little With bit of olive butter. oil, chef. Butter, 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 butter. butter. So, and what, how are you going to be cooking these, chef? We're going to start them off with a little bit of butter, just gradually salty them down, or what's going to happen here? Um, yeah, we're going to put butter in there, oil, 
curry powder, season it, and then hopefully we just let them cook away. All right, then. And olive oil, chef, is the one you want? A little bit of olive oil as well. There you go, mate. Please. Pour a little bit of that in there. With a bit of style, you know. Let's okay. see how much style you've got. This one we're going into. And find this out. One. Yeah. Sorry, that one. In there. There you go. That's it. A little bit just mm. on the top there, like that. That's beautiful. So okay. tell me, do, do you believe in love at first sight for someone who runs a dating agency? Well, to be honest with you, when I met Sarah first off, within sort of three minutes, sparks were flying. So, yeah, I personally yeah. do believe in love at first sight, and that sort of inspired us to set the company up in the first place. Mm. So, what, do you, what, is, what do you look for, then? I mean, it's, uh, people say, as you look in the eyes, you look at the shape of someone's body, or what, what is it? Is it personality? What seems to be the, the overriding factor? It's just chemistry, isn't it, really? Yeah. At the end of the day, what, what makes two people fancy each other? There's a yeah. chemistry there. That chemistry either exists or it doesn't exist. Sure, sure, Has sure. Has that person got the X factor? Big yeah. bank balance, that helps. Big bank it? balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice car. Yeah. I'm glad you said bank balance, Tone. Yeah. Now, tell us. What did you look for in the Mrs. Tone? What was it, what was the, the the thing that really spot when you saw Katie? You've known each other quite a while now. What what was it that uh, got you going? Um, well, obviously she's pretty. Yeah. Um, but when I met her, she mm. was surrounded by men. Yeah. She was fantastic aura that attracts men, and I just thought I saw her, and I swear to God, I thought I'm going to marry that girl. You did. And I didn't know her then. Yeah. I swear. Is, on my is, that, life. Is, that, is that quite common then? That type of thing that you can look at someone and you can think, wow, because you kind of. And had you had yeah. you had a visual contact by then, Tone? Uh, well, I'd saw her, but yeah. we hadn't actually met. We did you, did she see you too? Um, well, she was too busy with all the boys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's enough, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> How did you get rid of the boys then? Hey, well, I just gave it a bit of the old Tobin charm, you know, it is, ain't <laughs> 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 He's looking, for a, he's looking for a job. What yeah. are we going to do here with him? Do you want to whip, whip your eggs? Yes, egg whites. Okay. I need three yolks. Right. OK, here we are, Tone. Just show us how you pull those out, because everyone makes this sort of mistake. There you go. Just pulling those One. out. Three yolks, yeah? Three yolks yeah. in that, and, and three whites in there. Two, three. What are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All sorts of wonderful right. tips on we're how to separate really, your really... eggs in three bowls. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to do uh, a very quick souffle. I'll put, I've got some double cream in this pan here, mm. and I'm reducing it down. Then I'm going to add my grated cheese. Yeah. Take it off the heat, and that will just start to melt that cheese down. So what? So what's that? Really, is a thick sure. cheese sauce. Then you put some egg yolks in there. Egg yolks going in. Now that's going to thicken up a bit more. Just put okay, that fold in the egg whites. Fold in the egg whites, and that's it. Job done. Okay. Salt, a little bit of pepper. Okay, fantastic. Just tighten that up a bit. Okay, loads of pepper going in there. And look at those foaming potatoes, ladies and gentlemen. Again, not over too much of a high heat. Okay, the gentle heat, the mixture of the oil and the butter. The oil obviously can get to a higher temperature. It's going to prevent your butter from burning. And slowly it's going to cook the chips and absorb all those lovely spices too. Interesting. We'll come back Thank and you, see Ames. how we finish it up later on. Yes. Back down to the green pepper kitchen here. And uh, we've got Chef Gino de Campo. He's making, I don't know, it looks like a, almost like a pesto-y thing. I'm not quite sure. What's well, going on here, Well, it's an uh, um, herb crust. Herb crust, herb OK. Crust. What I've done, I put a little bit of bread, uh -huh. then i got a little bit of butter with a lot of herb, and that's what you want to get. A nice, uh, thin, oily kind of crust, because when it's going to go to the salmon, it's going to give you the moisture Beautiful. To the and uh, there is a lovely, lovely colour, guys. Just look at that. It's a vibe. It almost looks... Like one of those lovely things that uh, you know you put in the you put in lovely. The it's fantastico. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Quel lovely, fantastico. Fantastico crusty. <laughs> We've uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what type okay, of herbs so did you, chef? Tell me the herbs that you got in there. Uh, we put a little bit of rosemary, a little bit of parsley, a little bit of basil, a little bit of mint, a little bit of everything that I go here. Okay. So literally, use up whatever you have. Whatever you go, whatever you you're just putting there. The uh, the one that I don't like to use is uh, coriander. Coriander. Because I think it's overtake the other flavours. OK. I'm not very too keen powerful. on the... Yeah, too powerful. A little bit too okay, powerful. OK, that's a good point, because sometimes, you know, we just have it there, we can throw everything in, and, and it's worth remembering that. All right, we've got some uh, lovely toasted... Uh, so bread we just toast well, this is um, for the olive oil. This is for the bruschetta because mm. the most important thing when you make a bruschetta, mm. the bread has to be nice and chunky. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt. Do them in the griddle pan because the outside nice and crispy, the inside nice and soft. Lovely. Just like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
OK, so we got I this, wish I was a this. penne pasta, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, 11 minutes to go, Gina. Get that salmon on and okay. notice our chefs are not panicking with the fish, guys. It doesn't take that long to cook and you want to kind of retain a lot of the moisture. Sometimes we cook it far too long and it kind of dries out. It does dry out. It releases all those lovely juices. Tell me, then, how does speed dating work, then? You've got this idea that, you know, obviously people can go online or phone you up, but when they get there, what actually happens? Well, basically, we have a, an equal ratio of guys and girls. So mm -hmm. we have 25 men, 25 women. Um, they're greeted on the door. When they come in, they're given um, a, a name badge, a scorecard and a pen. And then, basically, they have a few drinks, 25 face-to-face -face dates, and uh, you get to decide who you want to see again. 25 <laughs> dates, ladies and gentlemen, throughout the course of the evening. I haven't had that in a lifetime, have you? <laughs> 25 dates, they're given three minutes each. Exactly. OK, so they sit in circles or something, do yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, basically, we ask all the ladies to sit down at their seats. Once all the ladies are seated, we ask the guys to sit opposite the ladies, and then three minutes begins, and every three or four minutes, we blow the whistle, and the guys move on to the next table. So it's the men that have to move, we stay seated. The girls stay seated. Exactly. That's fine. I, I, kind of, I like the idea of that. Yeah, and... But uh, what I can't understand is how you can win over someone in three minutes, because, let's face it, yeah, if you, if you guys, both of you, you and Dan, you're good-looking people, a good-looking couple. Mm -hmm. Some people out there, a lot of people who go to dating agencies, they haven't got the looks, they haven't got the charm, perhaps they haven't even got the figure, so, and they have to use their personality. Does it, is three minutes enough for them to get that message across? I think the key thing is, is, is to be yourself, is, mm. you know, to go in, expect to have a fun evening, yeah. expect to meet a, a lot of people from all sure. walks of life, yeah. um, and just be yourself and just and have fun. You know, lots of people, you know, the feedback that we get from our events is that everybody's had a great time, they've met some interesting people, sure. and lots of people that they'd like to see again. That's amazing. Perhaps, Gino, is three minutes enough for you to win over a lady's heart? Three minutes is too long. <laughs> <laughs> I get bored after three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I mean, to be honest, Ainsley, I think, you know, the three minutes... I mean, we have done a lot of research into mm -hmm. this. Three minutes is definitely long enough yeah. to know whether there's that chemistry. Sure, Anta, what You'll is know it? after three minutes of talking oh, to somebody, brain. you'll know sure. whether, you, whether you want to see them again. Sure. Um, on your scorecard, you've got three choices, either a yes or no or a friend, and then, obviously, you know, you mark on your scorecard True. at the end of each day if you want to see them again. True. And if it's reciprocal, then we match you up at the end of the event. I, I suppose she's right, isn't she, ladies? Can you imagine going out for an entire evening and being with that one person? I'm bored after five minutes. Exactly, yeah. Three minutes is a good way. Three minutes is just yeah, okay. the right amount of time. Tell us about the success rate from, uh, say, from one to ten. What are we talking success rate? To be honest, 90% um, of our guests that come to our events get at least three matches. Yeah. A match is basically if I ticked you and you ticked me, mm. then we match you both and you get each other's contact sure. details. And you've had three weddings already? Yeah, we've had three weddings and we've got a baby on its way as well. A uh, baby on its way? Yeah, and it could be one of 25 people that belongs to that. Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, <laughs> sorry. No, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll talk again. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, back to the food. We've got onion sauce. OK, so okay. what do we do? Here yeah. we've got the onion. Now yeah. what do we do? We put a little bit of the uh, chunked salmon inside, so we mm -hmm. make the sauce. And you keep the skin on, Gina? No, no, we take the skin off. I'll just chunk it so it's easy to take <laughs> it off. You just forgot Oh, dear, you No, but this him. is great. This it's, is what yeah, it's all about. This is the type of things that happens to us at home. And it's, it's Actually, the the, it is the reason why I did that. It's the easiest mm. way to do, because yeah. if it's a whole uh, fish... Yeah. You, know, you need to feed it like this. It sits well on the chopping board that you can take the skin off. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Okay, okay. okay so what I, what I need? I need uh, a little bit of garlic chopped up, please. Here we are, Here we are my darling. Have we got any cream or Thank something you. somewhere? Yeah, I've just bashed that. There you go, and a couple Jeez. of those will pop out there. There you go, a couple okay. of cloves of garlic, okay. a little bit of cream. That? Cream. What type of cream you want? More cream, you're saying, chef? Uh, I don't know. Oh, we got the milk. It's all right. We Here we are. Now here's the cream, chef. Can we this, do with it? Yeah. Yeah, there's That's your cream. Brilliant. My That's apologies, cool. I didn't sit out. That's OK. Crush. We've got garlic crush there. We've got the... Uh, garlic crush, no, with the knife, with the knife. Oh, okay. It's the fish in the oven. That's looking yes. good. It's under the grill, actually. I yeah. want you to grill it. So it gets so crispy and soft inside. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And just to give you a very quick look, ladies and gentlemen, we've got that lovely crust on the top there, and you can see that. And if I show you, there it is. And just if I angle that ever so slightly, you can actually see when it's cooked. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All sorts of wonderful things happening here. But what about the red tomato kitchen? We've got six minutes to go. Let's find out how our chef, Tony Tobin's getting on over here. He's with his guest, Dan. And Dan, we're going to be talking about the agency in a moment, but first, back to your right. steak. OK, let's What go. about seasonings? Tell us about seasoning your steak. People that are not quite know, do you put the salt and pepper on afterwards, before you cook it, it or what? Depends, it depends on what side of the bed you get out on yeah. in the morning, seriously. And that's about the only difference. 
Honestly. Yeah, OK. Some people say, oh, you must put it on before. Some people say, no, you put it on afterwards because it, you know, if you put salt on there, it's going to start drawing the moisture out. Yeah, well, I'm going to cook it now and it's going into a hot pan, it's going to okay. seal it, so the moisture's not going to come out. Great. But I was taught to season it afterwards. OK. I've rebelled yeah. and now I'm seasoning it before. OK. And it makes no difference at all. Right, right. And you've got no tea. Was it, a, was it a, quite a strict tea to talk to you there? Nico. Nico. Oh, right. Shea Nico is one they of our come, top chefs in this country. They don't come any though. stricter than Nico. I know. Him. Really, uh, and so, but uh, so you're rebelling just because you want to, just because I can. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Now, tell us about your burger. What have you got right. in there, chef? It's Five the, minutes to go. In there, we've here. got we've got chopped um, mm -hmm. rump steak, onion, thyme, yeah. salt, pepper, and we've just grated a little bit of bread to make some breadcrumbs yeah. in there, just to hold it together. Well, it's interesting watching bring yeah, it all together. Learning lots, learning yeah. lots here. Yeah. Okay, that's the steak. Why did you put it in the ring first, chef, to get the perfect shape? Yeah, and it was a mistake to take it off. Yeah, lovely. Right, now, this is the... You know, we haven't got any bread rolls, but that's going to be the bottom. Steak in the middle. Yeah. Another one on top is going to look like Beautiful. a burger. And you've got a little bit of soup going on here. Soup mushroom. going here. We're going to blitz that, that up. OK. Now, tell me, how do people find out, then, whether they've been sort of accepted or not, so to speak. Do you know what I mean? Because you said you have these scorecards, yeah. yes or no. Do you tell them face-to-face, -face, which can be embarrassing, or...? No, what they do is, they, it's all computer-based, they go back into the website after the event, so in their own time and space, enter their results, and if they tick someone, the other person's ticked them, that's a match, and then they get their personal details and can email them or contact them thereafter. Right, so it's, 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 it's kind of... So less rude, really, isn't yeah, exactly, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, it's, it's awful when you do something face to face. You say no, but if you do it through an email, it's a little bit easier. We've got four minutes to go, gentlemen. Four minutes. Okay. We've got a lovely souffle, by the way. And what's in there? Cheese and onion and chives. No, do double cream, cheese, yeah. um, egg yolks, salt and pepper, and then uh, with yeah. egg whites. So yeah. what about? Uh, we'll do this. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you just hold that there, up and down a little bit. There you go. What about um, food? Do you ever do you ever sort of invite people to lots of lovely things to eat when you go to these meetings? We don't advise people eating at the actual uh, events because um, it's very difficult to obviously appeal sexy if you're actually yeah. eating at the time, and also things like garlic and uh, onions can obviously come about oh, in a bit of a bad way. So we don't encourage eating. Really. There. there we are. We just spin that right round there. There we are. There we are. There you go. It's a tone. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to go, go up and down on there like that. Really push down on those little bits. Tone, what about you? Do you think uh, food is sexy? Because they said they don't have food at, the, uh, at their meetings. But I think if everyone's eating garlic, it's not so bad, is it, really? It's, no, it's absolutely. I think food is sexy. I think cooking is, you know, my wife loves to see me. When we do these demonstration stuff, yeah. she loves to watch me cook. She finds it very, very sexy. So I'll be home later. All right. And uh... <laughs> It's the afternoon, Tone. What's this game? <laughs> <laughs> Enough for all the bit of cooking in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> What's he lying? Yeah, exactly. stop. That's enough, my man. That okay. looks great. Yeah. Wait, Zilli, how can I drain the pasta? How are you drain? Up there, up there. Where? Up there. See what kind of I what. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I thought you were going to do it like a Jack Lemon and put it through a tennis racket or something like that. Do you remember that in the film? No. It some, uh, was it, was it, was it the, the uh, some like it hot? No, it wasn't some like it hot. Which when he was with Shirley MacLaine and he put the uh, the spaghetti through Before a. Before uh, my time, Ainsley. Before too, your I'm time. Too, too young for that. I ain't coming. To, I ain't coming to your your speed dating <laughs> thing, mate. You've got to be joking. Fantastic. Now, what about our chefs? Do you think they'll do well? Oh, I think they're doing doing a good job so far. Yeah. yeah. The, the proof will be in the pudding, as they say. Okay. The proof's in the pudding, and maybe they'll be they'll invite you along to one of their do's. Okay, gentlemen. Less than one and a half minutes now. About one minute, ten seconds to go. Start thinking about your food. How you're going to present it. How you're going to win that vote from um, our it's audience okay. members. Get some glasses. And up. that's it. The get music really is kicking in now. Let's get this done. Mmm. Can we get the plates? Here we go. We really, the just moving there. along. The plates are coming up there. Pork, okay. Pork. Oh, salmon is looking fantastic in there. The this steaks is not have come out. It's perfect. Okay, absolutely. Okay, less than about 40 seconds. Urgent, you're voting for what the chefs did with the ingredients. Please think about that before you hold up those cards. Have they been created? They've given you one or two ideas okay, that you can take home there. with you. We've got about 30 got seconds to go. We've also got a souffle in the oven. Sorry. We've got beautiful bruschetta coming out there with tomato and beans and all sorts of things. Delightful pasta. 20 seconds to go. Let's get this out now, guys. I'm going to ask you to help me count down any moment now, ladies and gentlemen. Take a deep breath, because here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 
And to remind you of what our chefs had in their bags, ladies and gentlemen, Gino De Campo started off with some salmon fillets along with penne pasta, butter beans, spinach, plum tomatoes and red onion, whilst Tony Tobin had in his bag rump steak, sweet potato, portobello mushrooms, broccoli, cheddar cheese and a large onion. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, talk about speed dating. Well, this is speed cooking, but well, just because it's speed, it doesn't mean to say that it's going to taste bad, because look at this. Lovely colours, full of vibrancy, and let's mm. find out how it tastes. Pick up your cutlery and have oh, a bit of a go. Tell us what you think. Okay. What about a name, then, uh, Gino? Well, I think, considering the fact that all this speed dating, it passed to be love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? Yes, 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 yes. It passed to be love. Mm. It passed to be love. Mm. Yeah, this one is uh, very simple because when you do arrabbiata sauce, mm. the mistake you can do is do, you do too much. A little yeah. bit of garlic, a little bit of fresh tomato, spinach inside, olive oil, nice and fresh, healthy, yes. mm. fantastico. It tastes gorgeous. Uh -huh. And a little chili too. Not Just a little bit, yeah, chili. Not too much because, you know, the people tend to put too much chili and then you don't taste the fresh tomatoes. Mm. Okay. So just a pinch of chili. Beautiful. Then I did a little bit of bruschetta with the butter beans, again, the fresh tomato, a little bit of onion, crusty bread, soft inside. Nice and easy, beautiful. Beautiful. That one's lovely. Uh, then this one I did uh, uh, spinachi picante, which is spicy spinach. And then I made a cream with the butter beans, a cream with a little bit of herbs, a little bit of milk, salt and pepper, nice. simple as that. It's yeah. a way to, and then I made, I made a, uh, herb crust. Yeah. I know, very simple, pan fried the salmon, herb crust with breadcrumb, herbs, butter. Yeah. And mm, this lovely. one, what I done, I did the cream version of the pasta, because salmon and cream works extremely well. Parsley and onion, red onion. Simple as mm. that. Fantastic. What do you think overall then? The, I think this one and that one definitely are my favourites. Those are your favourites? Yeah, so definitely. certainly given you some ideas. Yeah. Okay, you yeah, go lovely, in, you can impress lovely. the old man, can't you? Yeah. Very nice indeed. Well done, Gina. Nice. And well Sarah's done. delighted. Better Dan, I'm sure you're going to be delighted too. A good old steak man that you are. Yeah. You get stuck in, tell us what on. you think. And uh, as we find out from our chef, his name for his dish. Well, you know, Ains, there's nothing like a, a nice rump, so I thought, love at first bite. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. He'll be yeah. home soon, Katie. I know what he's like in the <laughs> afternoon. All right, love. Uh, no, tell it's, us. Uh, that's gorgeous. Very tasty. That really is. good. Yeah. Nice bit of uh, taste. Oh. Taste, taste of chips too. Tell us what you think. What do you do? Okay, chef? on this this plate, you kept it. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of uh, beef. It's very very tender. So half of it, mm. we just salt and pepper, uh, grill in the grill pan very very quickly. Cooked it kind of medium rare. The uh, sweet potatoes we cut into chunky uh, chunky chips. Mm -hmm. Got them in a wok with some butter, olive oil, curry powder, salt and pepper, and we just gently caramelise them up, and they really start to really suck in all that butter. Well. Yeah, yeah, take on that flavour. We chopped up the rest of the steak with a bit of onion and thyme, uh, and we made it into a burger. We grilled the um, mushrooms for the for the top and bottom bun. Um, the souffle we've talked about before. It was the the cream and the cheese, egg mm. yolks folded in egg whites, Beautiful, and everything man. else we just put into a pan and made a little broccoli soup. Look at that, absolutely lovely, nice and light too. That beautiful sauce. Okay, yeah, shove that, shove that in your gob, Dan. Tell us what you think. <laughs> That'll keep them quiet. Yeah, mm. that's very, very tasty as well, actually. Yeah, all good. All good. Can't fault it at all. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they can't fault our chefs, but you know how good they are. But what do our studio audience think today? Is it going to be a green pepper day or a red tomato one? Let's find out. So we ask them all to please vote now. And up they go. Oh, and look at this. This is a close oh. one, a very close one, but there are a few more. Red tomato! <laughs> Sorry, you know. Well done, my man. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go. Congratulations. £100 spending money there for you. Have you enjoyed yourself today? It's been brilliant, thank you, Ainsley. Yeah, well, good fun. luck with the old speed dating. I know it's thank a great you. thing, and people of all ages can come along, can't yeah, they? Yeah, indeed. Anything from 20 up to 55. Great. Right. Well done. And uh, well done to you thank too, Thank you sir. very much. Fantastic. Oh, we've got a few in the audience that are excited, ladies yeah, come and gentlemen. On, come on, we're They're all getting welcome. excited. Huh? Come to the Ready, Steady Cook show, and you'll meet your single person of your dreams, I tell you. You've had a great day today, I'm sure. Have, We've got I've a really lovely Ready, Steady Cook hamper for you to take home with you. Yeah, so you'll be able to do some cooking for you and Dan. Thank I you for coming you. along I'm and telling ready. us all about speed dating. And uh, Thank you. Chef, absolute pleasure. Once again, come Thank and join you. us, Tony, Thank because you. we have more food on the way, ladies and gentlemen. comes in the form of the quickie bag. In the meantime, let's say a very big thank you to partners, Sarah and Dan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, oh, you never know what's in store. I know this is one of your favourite parts of the show. And today the chefs have uh, 
cocktail pita, pita if you like, or pitas. Um, we've got some kidney beans, we've got some panera cheese, um, along with some dried, but they're soft figs, soft dried kind of figs, if you like. Courgette and spring onion. Well, kind of a... Well, unusual mix. Well, well. And our chefs are saying well too, so they're equally confused. So it's not very well. No, no, not very well. No. What do you think, Gina? It's all right. Il primo in cucina. Il primo in cucina. Si. Yes. Okay. Uh, what can we do? I think first of all with the courgettes, we can do some ribbon and courgettes marinated in balsamic vinegar, olive oil, with some spring onion. Mm -hmm. So put that on the side. Then we could do some. Uh, let me think, maybe some caramelized fig served yeah. on a meringue, on a toasted meringue. Yeah. Yeah, with a little bit of whipped cream inside, so yeah. a nice little dessert there very quickly. Uh, with this one, uh, ah, we can do some stuffed pita with this uh, cheese, with a little bit we can make, yeah, with some, you know, red kidney beans inside, a little bit of spring onion again. Mm -hmm. uh, or we could make a very quick curry, I guess. You yeah. know, I could do a very quick curry with a little bit of toasted, Bread. Okay, it's coming along again. That kind yeah. of spicy thing using the old pinner cheese. Very nice Gino tone. Not well, much time. I was just saying, can you stop there? Because I've run out of ideas. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd cut the courgettes up uh, in some flour. Courgette fritters. Sure. Make a dip with the uh, red kidney beans. Spice up the paneer. Um, stuff some pitters with that. Uh, what else could we do? These figs. I'm not a big fan, so I'd probably give Poach those to Gino to do something with that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I knew you would have yeah, said that. Pass the fig, ladies and gentlemen. Pass the fig, indeed. Or we could do like a um, paneer con carne kind of thing. Con carne. Paneer con carne. Or chili con paneer. Chili con paneer. <laughs> yeah. He can confuse him either. <laughs> I hope he hasn't confused the uh, studio audience. Gino, What's yeah. it going to be, guys? The green peppers or the red tomatoes? Will you all please vote now? And up they go. And thank um, goodness for yeah, that. Yeah, there you go. Don't vote for me now. <laughs> I know. It's not the time to vote for me now. Well, I'm sorry they have to. You know, <laughs> they want to see what you can do with your cucini. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes cooking time starts now. Let's okay. do it. Okay. What can we do for A you? A walk. So the first thing, if we can, yeah. If we can, please do the uh, meringue. Just a little meringue with a little bit of whipped cream, and then we have the figs with a little bit of sugar, and we toast them on okay. that side. Now what I need here mm -hmm. is I'm going to start to do the ribbon of courgettes. Yeah. Okay. Have we got a slicer somewhere here? Okay, are you got this okay. pan on, Gina? Let's get uh, this one, on yeah, we put that one on. Because what I want to do, courgettes, they're fantastic when they roll, nice and crunchy. Yeah. Okay, okay but the way so to you're do looking it... for it to be nice and crunchy. Oh. Sorry, Chef. Okay, it's okay. Okay, uh, pan, pan. And anyway, I'll get this char grill pan on for you, Gina. Just in case, all right, then we're going to do... Uh, did you say you're going to do something with skewers or...? Yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this one into skewers with figs. Yeah. OK, I'll just finish here very, very easily. Nice and thin mm -hmm. with the peeler. So, and use the peeler, that's the secret, Yeah, use the it? peeler so they get nice and thin. So you put them in a little bit of bowl. Okay, a little chef. bit of balsamic vinegar, uh -huh. olive oil, OK? And what's happened? The acidity of the balsamic vinegar, we start actually to cook them. Ah! So, olive oil. The balsamic vinegar, mm -hmm. and also they give them a nice browny colour. A little bit of salt, okay, pepper, and it's done. Simple as that. Very, simple very as that. Simple. This is done. This one you can serve them on toasted bread or just for a starter. Okay, and, and you can just put on a plate for a starter. If you did not have uh, balsamic vinegar, what could you use? You Anything can use lemon juice, lemon juice, white wine vinegar, red vinegar, and any vinegar because it needs to help on the cooking. Okay, chef, beautiful. So we got this one. We need to marinate for about five minutes. Done. And finito. Finito. Okay, now we're now gonna prepare a couple of skewers. What we got? Actually, you know what I need? I need a, um, a little bit like a mint, sour cream or Greek yogurt. So, okay, uh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Okay, chef, I'll do that for so you. So, this one, what to do? We got this fantastic cheese, panner cheese. I'm gonna put a little bit of cheese, a fig, then another cheese, then I'll make a little skewers. Okay, skewers, piedino, we call it in Italian. Mm -hmm. So a little spiedino, and then we're just going to put a little bit of olive oil on top and mm. grill it. Yeah. And we're going to serve it with a toasted pita bread. Yeah. And a little bit of your... Um, and the yoghurt. And the yoghurt. Now, tell me about the, uh, the, the paneer cheese, then. Are you familiar with it? Or... Well, because it's kind of more, more something we associate with Indian cooking, isn't it? It's, a paneer cheese, it starts like ricotta. Yeah. Okay, what you do? You put a full-fat milk 
into a tall pan. Yeah. As soon as the milk starts to bubble, if you put some lem fresh lemon juice on top, the fat separates from the water and you get ricotta cheese. Okay. Now, if the ricotta stays there for a long time, it's going to come like this one, hard. Okay, so it's great for uh, um, uh, vegetarian people because you don't have any uh, animal fight inside or anything a like very that. Very good tip. Okay, guys, any of you who've got those allergies, that's a pretty good tip to have there. Okay. Tony, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, what did you do, Tone? <laughs> did you break something no, over no, there, just Tone? What are you, what are you mixing? What are you actually making? I'm, I'm making um, some meringue. I've got three egg whites, three tablespoonfuls of sugar, a little bit of vanilla, a touch of corn flour, and a little bit of lemon juice going in there and it's almost like a pavlova recipe okay and i'm going to try and kind of just um gun some but i'm going to try and poach some as well okay and chef tell me why why the corn flour because it holds it together okay so it's just something to really hold it together kind of combines it stabilizes it if you like now what i'm okay. going to do here i'm going to do like a, a a very quick kind of a curry thing you know so what, what we do i've got a little bit of a spring onion yeah. The red kidney beans, which associate very well with the, with the curry. So we got this one with a little bit of the cheese. Okay. Because yeah. this cheese, the fantastic thing about this cheese, you can fry it or deep fry it, stays whole all the time. Okay. It doesn't melt at all. All right, then. Okay? That's the secret. All right, then. So it mustn't melt. No, it must melt. But it doesn't. If you, if you quick uh, frying, it's fantastic. All right. Beautiful. Now, okay. this is cooking that down, and you're going to be putting that into the pan. I've got my... Uh, Pitta breads here. These are kind of okay. just nicely warmed through, and we're going to get the uh, paneer cheese into the pan now. We're just going to char grill those off. Okay, straight in there like that. Straight shift. in there. Just straight in there. It will probably need a couple of minutes on each side, All and right, it's then. done. And that's a little bit going in here. Yeah. Now, what I've, I've got, got here, guys, is the chefs asked me to combine. We've got a little bit of a natural. Well, you could use natural yogurt. You could use the kind of Greek style yogurt which we've got here, and fresh mint. You can throw in peppers into, into it if you want to. I've got some spring onions that I'm just going to be tossing in with the mint. So we've got the combination of these two, and then we're just going to be seasoning that up. We've also got a quickie question here. And today our quickie question comes from Catherine, oh, sorry, Kathleen Hart from Derry in Northern Ireland. Good afternoon to you, Kathleen. Uh, today's question is all about herbs. She said, I watch with fascination as you and the chef seem to be able to identify the fresh herbs so easily. Would you be able to give me a masterclass so I, so I am able to tell one herb from the other? Well, as our chefs continue, I'll just pull these out. What we've got here, and one of the things that a lot of people get confused with, uh, Gino, and you too, Tone, I'm sure you're aware of this, is these two herbs. We've got the flat leaf parsley and the coriander. They are very, very similar. Look at those two guys. And so what uh, this one here, they're slightly softer leaves. You can tell they're slightly softer just by their appearance. Also, the aroma, you, be get, you become more familiar as you sort of smell them, you get used to using them, all right? And, of course, this one here is the coriander and this is the flat leaf parsley, all right? Slightly, uh, this has got more of a sort of more jagged edge, the, the way it's sort of cut in there. Let's move on. I've got very little time. I've only got four minutes. I need a whole sort of a ready, steady cook afternoon to tell you all about these. Let's pull them all out first, and then we can tell you, Kathleen. Do you have a favourite herb then, Gino? I think parsley. To me, parsley and basil they have to be the best one. OK. Because um, um, they kind of help other ingredients. You know, they don't overtake the flavour of other ingredients. That's why I think they work very well with everything. OK. All right. Here, what I've got, I've got a little bit of uh, tomato paste, uh -huh. tomato puree, a little bit of Tabasco sauce so just to give a nice kick. OK? And Lovely. I've got figs, I've got the cheese, so you've got a little bit of a sweet and sour in. OK. okay. Lovely. All right, that's all happening there. I'm going to toss that in there. That won't take a second. Briefly, let's start at this end. We've got the chives. Chives, really, really lovely. It's a bit of like an onion flavour, all right? You can uh, pop them in all sorts of things. You can bind them with a little bit of yoghurt. It goes particularly well with fish, all right? And, again, they're quite soft. Not particularly good when you dry them out. You do need to use the fresh chives. Be, we'll Three minutes to go now, guys. Very briefly yeah. through. With next one, we've got the thyme here. The thyme next door is the we'll rosemary. Excellent. Again. Even if you use dried, Kathleen, you're going to get some wonderful flavour introduced into your food here. Great in stews. We all know about rosemary with lamb. But these guys, as I said, they dry out really, really well. If you do use the dried variety, three times stronger than the fresh variety. Remember that. All right, I've already told you about the parsley, the coriander. Coriander, of course, you can use the root, you can use the stem, you can use everything. Great in Asian cooking. We've also got this lovely aniseed flavour here. This one's called tarragon. 
particularly nice. Again, I'm not too fond of the dried variety, but lovely when it's fresh. Goes well with fish. Again, with the chervil. This one, you really do need to use quite quickly, the old chervil. It dries out very quickly. The colour changes, it goes a bit yellow. Not great for drying at all. If you see dried chervil, avoid it. I really don't uh, suggest that at all. And we've got the lovely dill. Well, dill, Scandinavia. That's what comes alive. You know, the dill with the salmon. That's great. Mixed with a bit of cottage cheese and stuff like that. Great. Two minutes to go, guys. And finally, we've got the mint here. Well, you know about mint, putting it in is fantastic with drinks and stuff like that. But all of these herbs that we use on the programme is to enhance your cooking. If you can buy fresh herbs, use them, guys. It will make all the difference. Very, very quick, Masterclass. Do you have a Masterclass? Tone, do you have anything to add to the old fresh... Uh... Oh, my garlic's gone. I'm not using that one. Um, yeah, when... <coughs> When you, um, when you buy your herbs, Ange, sometimes you, the bunches, they're a bit more than what you need. Yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid. Chop them up, wrap them up in a little bit of cling film and freeze them. Freeze them. Absolutely fine to freeze Freeze them herbs. down. Good tip there. OK. And I've also... We, what I haven't got in there, guys, I didn't pull out, is the basil. Well, basil and tomatoes, it's fantastic basil. Don't, I don't basil like... is the queen of the herbs. And I don't like the dried stuff. You like the dried basil? I don't no, like I dried. think the best tip we can give to people is actually forget buying the dry one. Yeah. If you can, get the fresh one on. OK, there you go. One minute to go. I'm just putting a little bit of garlic here to combine with my mint. Remember, I've got all of that that I'm going to be mixing in with my yoghurt to kind of make that lovely and creamy. Just crush that down a little bit before we throw all of that in. All of that's going in there. 45 seconds to go now, guys. Let's get this out. Here we are. Thank you very much, Gino. That's it. Just I'm popping that in there. A bit of salt and pepper. OK, coming up to the 30-second mark any moment now. There we are. There we are. 30 seconds to go. Let's oh, just mix that in. How are you doing, Tony? Are you going to be ready? Yeah, ready. OK, mate, we're ready to go. Just using this sort of tub here. That's it. 20 seconds to go. Right, where do you want this, Gina? A little bit out here? The picket, yeah, and on this one as well. Lovely. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop! Yeah, Fabian is the yes. Very nice. Oh, look, Tony's come up with a, a, another addition, which we'll find out about just in a minute, ladies and gentlemen. You can see that on your screens. But uh, what about a name, then? Well, as Vegan said in Oliver, you got to fill a pita pocket or two. Very <laughs> nice, <isn't he? laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, yes, they even get Oliver down there in Italy, eh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, tell us how Fagan prepared all of this lovely food, then. OK, so we start here with the skewers, very yeah. simply the skewers with the cheese and the figs. Yeah. Then we prepared a little bit of red kidney beans, rustic salsa underneath mm. with a pita bread. Then we made a very quick curry here mm. with courgettes, the fig, the cheese, the red kidney beans, a little bit of tomato paste, Tabasco, yeah. so nice and spicy. Very good for a vegetarian option. Oh, yes, it? excellent. Lovely. And very easy and quick to prepare for a dinner. Yeah. Then there we do marinated uh, courgettes ribbon in balsamic mm. vinegar, olive oil, salt and pepper with your beautiful salsa And on they've top. started to cook too, haven't they? Because the vinegar is, uh, yeah. you're saying, Gina, and we say this to you on the programme all the time, it's acidic, ladies and gentlemen, it starts to cook. Even your lettuce leaves, any dressing, it starts to wilt it a little bit. Sorry, Gina, carry so, on. No, that's it. And then... Uh, Tony, uh, very Tony, briefly, chef. Um, egg whites, whisked up, uh, sugar, a little bit of corn flour, uh, vanilla seeds and a little, little bit of lemon juice. And I piped it on, finished it with a gun, whipped cream, and then I've just done these in some sugar and red wine. And i just shown you another way to cook it. You can actually poach it. And it's cooked, it's, it's all nice and poached. You get a nice light mm. meringue, and we've just a bit of sugar on top, finished it with a the gun. There you go. Wow. Simplicity in itself, ladies and gentlemen. And they're all available on our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash food. Thanks for joining us, and see you soon on Ready, Steady, Cook. Say bye, guys. Bye, Ciao. guys. <laughs>